Who doesn't love a good crispy chicken tender? Welcome to Cook It With Tim and my name is Tim Clowers and I'm gonna show you how to make a really crispy chicken tender, AKA Japanese style chicken katsu. So what katsu means is flattened out meat, Japanese style. So what you do is you're gonna pound out the meat, whatever you're using, whether it's pork, or chicken, but traditionally in Japanese cuisine, it is, it is pork katsu, flattened out pork. But I love the chicken version of this. First thing you wanna do is get your egg, flour, and panko set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack three eggs. I'm gonna pour my flour and then my panko. All right, let's pour our flour in. Next, we're gonna pour in the panko. So the next step is to put my seasonings and the eggs and the flour. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and portion these out and it's gonna be equal parts of everything and I will list the full recipe. It'll be available at cookitwithtim.com. We're gonna do black pepper, chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, and salt. I put equal parts of all the seasonings in just one bowl and mix it all together. So what I'm gonna do now is put seasonings in the flour, whisk that. Now let's go to the eggs, but first I'm gonna just pop those yolks. And I'm gonna stir in my seasonings. So let's face it, frying is kind of a messy business and so is barbecue. So let's minimize our mess just a little bit. I'm gonna take some plastic wrap. All right, and I'm just gonna lay it down on top of my cutting board. And I've got two and a half pounds of chicken. Let's go ahead and lay that down on the cutting board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a knife and I'm just going to slice some of the chicken, all right? So I'm gonna put my hand right here and I'm just simply gonna run the knife under it like that. And I'm gonna make a cutlet. You can still see it's pretty thick, but don't worry about that that's where the next step comes into play. That right there, I think we'll just go ahead and leave that even though it's still a little bit thicker than that one. Just a quick kitchen tip when you're working with like slimy chicken and a knife and you're trying to cut it in half. If you'll notice when my hand was on the chicken, my fingers were pointed up and I was applying pressure to the chicken that allows you to put pressure on the chicken and allows the knife to slide through it. Now the next step is you're gonna need one of these meat tenderizing tools right here and don't worry, I will have this link down below, but I'm not gonna pound it just like this because it'll get chicken stuff everywhere. So I'm gonna take another layer of plastic wrap. And one thing if you'll notice right here, I've got the chicken spaced enough because once I pound them out with this tool right here, they're gonna begin to flatten out and become bigger. All right, so I pounded out all the chicken breasts to where it about a quarter of an inch thick. See that right there, how, how thin it is? You can almost kind of like see through it a little bit. That's how thin you want it. Call me weird, I don't really care. I don't like biting into a big meaty piece of chicken sandwich. Like for example, when you go to Chick-fil-A, when sometimes you get those really thick pieces of chicken, with this, it's not gonna happen. Now, the second thing I wanna show you is that's a really big piece of chicken. So what I'm gonna do is this. So we're gonna cut that in half, okay? And that's more manageable size piece of chicken. So out of two and a half pounds, that's gonna give us eight big tenders. That's enough to feed at least three people. Depending on how big the people are, you might get more. All right, I'm simply just gonna place them on a plate. You gotta have homemade ranch to go with it. But I wanna show you how easy it is to clean up the mess. Technically my ranch is not homemade, but I tell you what, the reason that I would encourage you to make this kind of ranch is because it's what over 60% of the restaurants that you go to uses these commercial grade ranch packets. I've been using these for 10 years. I've been using these packets. So here it is, it's Gordon Food Service Ranch Packet. When it comes to making ranch dressing from packets, one of the key steps that a lot of people miss is getting the seasonings mixed properly and distributed in the mayonnaise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the ranch seasoning packet, not the whole thing, because it's too strong. This is a gallon mixture. So we're gonna take uh, two tablespoons of the ranch packet seasoning mix, and then we're gonna mix it with the mayonnaise and the seasoning. So let's do that real quick. All right, the next step is to drizzle in buttermilk. 
Okay, so there is the ranch dressing. So what I'm gonna do is cover this and stick it in the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes while we fry up our chicken. So let's get that done real quick. So let's take our cutlet and we're just simply gonna dredge it in flour. And I'll show you two of these in the flour. And you wanna make sure that the chicken is coated very well in the flour and just shake it off. And I'm saying shake it off. All right, then down into the egg. This is where it starts to get a little bit messy. And make sure that the chicken cutlet is coated well in all of the egg. Otherwise, you'll have trouble with the panko sticking to the chicken. See that little white part right there? All right, so at this point, just let it drip and then over into the panko. I like to put it in there and take the panko and put it on top and then I'm gonna press down. All right, and then I'm gonna flip it over, press down, and just repeat that process. All right, and there we have a beautifully coated chicken tender. All right, let's do one more on camera. So we're gonna take that beautiful piece of chicken cutlet and we're gonna drop it down in the flour. All right, now we're just simply gonna take it over to the egg, drop it in the egg, and this is where I like to get tongs and just kind of tap it down to make sure that you don't see any white part. Just grab it, just let that egg drip off, and then move it over to the panko. I like to grab the sides and just let it fall on the chicken. And then I'm gonna just press down. And as a double check, what I like to do is just sprinkle a little bit more on the top, press down. And then here we have a finished product of our chicken cutlet. I've got a pot with canola oil in it and we're up to 350 degrees. So the next step really is to fry these chicken katsu tenders and literally it's about 45 seconds and they're gonna flip it over and we're gonna fry it. So let's go ahead and lay it down in the oil. And I just wanna show you how fast this thing cooks. You can already see it's golden brown just like that. We'll do another 45 seconds to make sure it's completely done. All right, so we're at close to two minutes on that chicken. Very important when you're frying chicken, a little bit of sea salt as soon as it comes out of the oil. Let's fry up one more piece of chicken. Let's go ahead and flip our chicken. Ooh, look at the beautiful golden brown color. What I love about these chicken tenders or chicken katsu is man, they cook so fast. So here is this beautiful crispy chicken tender, AKA chicken katsu. This is one of the most favorite things that my daughter says that I make for her. It's crispy, it's delicious. Let's just try it. Mm. It's even better when you dip it in some homemade buttermilk ranch. All right, that wraps it up for this video recipe. Be sure to like this video, make a comment, share it, and also visit my website at cookitwithtim.com to get the full detailed, typed out, printable recipe. I'll see you next time.